Hi guys, this is Tim and Simeon from Swedish Homestead. Many people commented on how sharp my brother's chainsaw was and today we want to show you how we sharpen our chainsaws and how you can get it razor sharp. We're going to put the chainsaw to a hard test as this is some oak that has been laying here for quite a while. Oak is very hard. So today I'm going to show you how I file my chainsaw and uh, the first thing you need to know is the size and also the manufacture of your chain. Depending on the size you will use different size or diameter files and also depending on the manufacturer if you choose to use a gauge when filing your chain there's different style gauges and different size gauges for the different manufacturers. I'm gonna file this organ chain which is essentially the same as a Husqvarna chain and Husqvarna has this style gauge with two little wheels that the file slides over it's gonna give you the right depth and also if you follow the, the angle of the gauge it'll give you the right angle and I know if you would use this on for example a steel, ga uh, steel chain it would give you the wrong results because they are slightly different in shape and the height of the tooth in relation to other things so it won't be the right result however other manufacturers like steel or others they have their own equipment for this but you need to know the size of your chain and also the manufacturer you want to get your chainsaw razor sharp and the best way to do that is to use a gauge and to do it in your workshop when you can fasten it like this. Uh, when I took my license for, and my, got my training for the chainsaw from two Swedish lumberjacks and I got certified from them, um, one of the instructors said about the other that his chainsaw was the sharpest chainsaw he had ever seen. And boy oh boy was that a science behind that and he said that he always uses a gauge when he's in the workshop and he goes freestyle when he is out in the woods. And he said that you can easily get your chain sharper than if a machine sharpens the chain. So that's what we want to demonstrate to you now. Uh, we don't claim to be perfect at this and we don't claim to be as good as he is definitely. But we just want to show you how we do it and the saw that my brother uses is definitely sharp. Right here is a Husqvarna 560 and I have an 18 inch saw bar on it and it's a 0 0.325 chain 325 and the, the width of the groove on the saw bar is 1.5 millimeters and you got to know these things uh, to get it right and also if you have the little package or the little box that your chain came in it should tell you the size of file that you should use here I'm using a 4.5 millimeter file which is just a tiny bit smaller than a 4.8 millimeter file and it's just that it's recommended by Oregon and I personally find that it gets a little sharper than with a 4.8 millimeter file which is the most common file for this kind of chain has always been used for years and years but a couple of years ago they came out with this chain and 4.5 millimeter for me does the trick to get it really sharp. This chain right now it's not damaged by any rocks or anything it's just dull from normal cutting. It's not even terribly dull but it could use a little touch and it's good for demonstration purposes. This is a flat file and you use that to reduce the height of your uh, these risers I don't know what you call them those little things here and what they do is they're there for limiting the thickness of wood that the chain will rip out so the the wood shavings how thick they will be basically if you because the the teeth are angled backwards a little bit they are the highest here in the front and as you file them back they've got lower and lower and therefore the distance between the top of these and your edge here will also get smaller so for you to take off the same thickness 
uh, or the, the, the same amount of wood, you'll have to file those down. And also by how much you file down, you can also uh, adjust how your chain cuts. You can choose less for hardwood or frozen wood and you can do more for softer wood as a conifers typically. And, and you could use less for hardwood, for example, yeah, so oak or maple. So you have a gauge for that one as well, yeah. where it actually says that on, it's right here. Um, it actually says hard and soft right there. So one key thing for this is to have a sharp file. If it's dull, you just end up having to push really hard and the results won't be the same. It's not gonna take off the metal as smoothly. Another thing to consider is uh, to have the chain tensioned properly. If there's a bunch of slack hanging down here, it's kind of loose and if you push back on a tooth too hard, especially when the chain is loose, you'll actually change the angle of it a little bit. So you want to make sure your chain is properly tensioned before you start. And then it's important as well that you make sure that you sharpen each side uh, equally well because if you do a really good job on one side and then when you turn a saw around to do the other side you don't do it as well or you don't hold your file properly because it's a little more awkward or different your chain will actually cut uh, more on the one side and it's going to cause your, your saw to pull uh, sideways in the wood and you will have a hard time making straight cuts and then what I do is I just find my first uh, saw tooth here I kind of start filing and feel a little bit how many times I need to make it sharp and uh, then I try to keep about the same amount of poles if you want to say or yeah the same amount on each tooth as I move along the chain So I figured out I'm, I'm going to use about five strokes on each tooth here. And every now and then it's good to clean both your gauge a little bit, but especially the file from the shavings that get stuck on it. The other thing is the harder you have to push, uh, the rougher the actual cutting edge of the tooth will be. So it's good if you go a little lighter on the last couple strokes just to make it a little smoother. There's two things uh, you have to pay attention to so that the, the gauge can actually do its job. One thing is that as you file, both these are moving. If only one is moving, it means it's gonna be crooked. And what's uh, good is to put a little bit of oil in here sometimes so they don't get stuck because if they will, you're just gonna file a little groove into them and it won't work properly anymore. But pay attention that both of these are moving, both rollers. And the other thing is the angle you're holding your file. When you see there's a little line on this tooth uh, that you can use, but also you can look at the yeah, some edge on your gauge and try to hold the file parallel. Um, you see how this wouldn't be proper. Neither the line would be right on the tooth nor the edge of the gauge. Neither would this be. So by moving both those rollers, you'll make sure that you'll be deep enough, but also they'll prevent you from going too deep, which if you went freestyle, there's a high risk of you going too deep. And it will make your chain too aggressive and it will dull quite fast. Another piece of advice is to only move your file one way when you're filing against the tooth. As you go back you do not want to pull against it like this but you want to take it away from the edge and then for the next stroke you put it up against the tooth again. The reason for that is as you pull back you're gonna dull both your file but also what you just sharpen on the tooth because you're going back for uh, 
you, you'll be going back fast without paying attention and it might be a little crooked and it, it's just gonna dull your tooth. The file is not meant to work that way, it's one directional. One more thing to think about or to, to pay attention to is that your gauge actually sits in the proper position on your chain which means all the way down and uh, not up on something because that will totally mess everything up. It needs to sit uh, in the right spot. As you see here, it's this one has to sit between the two rivets here and there's um, yeah, as you see it's a little bit thinner here than there. There's small arrows down in there to show you where the forward direction is. Because if I was to put it on this way it would be completely off. This is the right way, so you need to pay attention to those things. Okay, I'm gonna check on if my brother did a good job here and made this sharp enough. And, you know, oh my goodness, let me see. What we do is use the nail, it kind of gets stuck in it. And then you see in my nail, on my nail there, um, I have a scratch in there. That is from that tooth. And that means that the chain is very, very, very sharp. For the, for the other side, I'll have to turn the chainsaw now. Before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and see if I have to file down on these um, risers or what you call them. Sometimes there's hardly anything you have to take off, so typically you can go a few filings without doing them. So maybe every fifth time or something you do it. But if you wait too long, you'll notice how even though your teeth are sharp, your chain still won't be cutting properly. And so I'm going to use the soft setting. And as you see, I can feel right here the, that I hit the edge, so I definitely need to take something off here. And this also has to sit properly. Right now it went up and sat crooked there on top of the chain there instead of having the chain in between here and that messed it up so you gotta really pay attention I don't really care for the way these gauges sit but that's how they are made it's kinda wobbly and you really gotta hold them well it takes a while to get used to You want to make sure you pinch the saw bar in the middle here so you don't um, get the chain trapped. You want to be able to spin it. Sometimes, for example, if you have uh, hit a nail or some piece of wire in a tree, the metal can actually lay itself here on the tooth and it's going to be a little harder and it's not going to feel the same. But when you're used to this, you can actually feel, if you know your file is sharp, then you can feel that it's taking away metal, shaving away metal or if it's just going smooth you know something's not right and you got to keep trying till you have this uh, resistance that you can just slightly feel and then you know uh, the file is actually removing metal as it should and it's going to make your tooth sharp. Okay well that's how we sharpen it now we have to do a test run. Let's go. We're going to put the chainsaw to a hard test as this is some oak that has been laying here for quite a while. Oak is very hard. Well, thanks guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this little instructional video about how to sharpen a chainsaw. We have very good results with this. 
uh, we will probably end up making another video about how to sharpen the chainsaw in the forest. We just talked about this. But I hope you enjoyed this. Um, make sure to subscribe for lots more forestry and other videos on the topic of homesteading. Um, we are posting daily at the moment and I hope you enjoy the channel. So uh, we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.